How do you replace a bad gas valve on a commercial package gas unit? How do you maintenance a commercial package gas unit? How do you replace a bad sensor? What does a bad sensor look like? What does a bad gas valve look like? Today, I'm gonna to talk about common problems as well that I have with these commercial package gas units. We're looking at these rooftop units today and I hope you're ready to learn something about it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing before we get started. If you need help with your project, you need tech support, click the join button, become a member, check out my membership levels. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. We got four package gas units we're gonna be working on today. I've got a bad gas valve for this unit. And that's probably what we're gonna do first is replace this gas valve. I've got a bad sensor for this unit as well. And we've got to tighten some fan belts. Look at this fan belt. It's not loose, so it doesn't need to be tightened. But when you look at this one, this is loose. So I'm gonna show you how to tighten that fan belt and then talk about common problems. So first, let me go ahead and turn the unit on and show you how we know this gas valve has got to be bad. So what tools do I need to diagnose this gas valve? This is the new gas valve. This is a White Rogers two-stage gas valve. You got a low and a high manifold pressure setting and adjustment screw there. I've got a box ratchet or a service valve wrench. I've got my drill 5 sixteenths, my meter field piece SC440, and my dual port manometer so that I can measure the outlet pressure whenever I call for this gas valve to open from my control board. So the meter to check the voltage to the gas valve and then this flathead screwdriver if I need to adjust the pressure. Right here is the outlet screw and this is what we need to be hooked on whenever we get voltage to our gas valve. We should have gas coming out of the outlet screw. We should have a pressure reading of around three and a half inches of water column. Now the first thing I want to do to measure the pressure of this valve is get this panel out of the way. So I've already taken out the screws. There's one, two, and then there's one more screw right here, three. And this panel will slide out. So I need to get it out of the way. All right. Now the panel's out of the way, I can easily hook up my manometer to the outlet pressure screw here. And if I wanna take and do some maintenance to the igniter, flame sensor, and the burners and clean that track, then I have enough room to get in here and do that. All right, so take this screw out. Just use the little box ratchet or service valve wrench and put my little port in that hole. There we go. Attach my tube. Boop. Make sure the gas valve is on, manometer is on, power is on, thermostat set to heating. Whenever our gas valve opens, it should have 24 volts going to these two wires. And usually they're labeled C and M, common and main valve. So we need to hook our meter leads to these two connections and turn our meter to volts AC. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we got a meter leads hooked up. Inducer motor should come on first, and then we should close all the safeties, including the pressure switch. We got the rollout switch over there. We got the limit switch here in the blower section and we should have 24 volts. So, let's see what happens. And what I'm gonna do is, whenever I verify 24 volts, I'm gonna hook these wires back up to the valve. So, 24 volts to the valve. All right, take these wires and hook these bad boys back up. Oh, well, didn't get it in time, that's okay. We got it connected now. So we know there's 24 volts in that valve. Turn the meter off. Wait for it to go back through its cycle. But we know since it's sparking and sending power to the gas valve that we've closed all the safeties. So that's nice. Blower just came on. And this right here is the limit switch. Can't really see it. But that's one of the safeties. Okay, gas valve is energized and we got zero pressure. You see that? You see that reading? That is zero, that's not three and a half inches. So 
I know for sure the gas valve is bad. So now we're gonna replace the gas valve and then we're gonna move on to talking about sensors, okay? So let me get this gas valve and I'll show you what tools I use to replace it. Okay, so to replace this gas valve is pretty easy. I've got two pipe wrenches and I've got some thread sealant or pipe dope or pipe glue. We're gonna loosen this union up right here and then I'm gonna take this connection loose and then I'll be able to put the new gas valve in. Notice our inlet pipe connection MPT thread fitting is three quarter inch. So we got a half inch, looks like street L, uh, going to a three quarter, a half inch to three quarter bell reducer. So we're going up from half inch to three quarter inch. And then this right here, this pipe that goes to our burner assembly is three quarter inch as well. So this gas valve is three quarter inch, three quarter inch. All right, let me go ahead and get this loose and start replacing it. Almost forgot gloves, got to use some nice gloves. Link in the description for all the tools I use just in case you want to get a couple tools or some gloves. Make sure you shut the gas off. The union is loose. So now I can take and go ahead and start turning this connector right here. And this one actually came off pretty easily as well, which I'm very thankful of. now to take this bracket loose as you can see and that's what holds this so 5 16 screw barely enough room to get this gas valve out because of this inducer motor so I'm so glad that I didn't have to take that inducer motor out now get some pipe thread sealant on there yeah we'll go ahead and put our new gas valve in so I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down so I can Put a nice amount of that pipe sealant on there. I like a lot. I like it a lot. There was just enough room, barely enough room, without having to take this inducer motor off to turn this gas valve and to get it out of the way. I've got some pipe thread sealant on the threads and I'm ready to thread this new gas valve in place and go ahead and check it. Exciting. Also want to mention there is an arrow on the gas valve so you know which direction to install the gas valve in that way it actually works when you get it installed so excited see see what i'm talking about here new gas valve in place got the manometer hooked up to the outlet pressure port and we've got the union tied back together. Make sure that when you're tightening a union, you have two pipe wrenches connected to it. That way, when you're tightening the union right here in the middle, that you don't turn these connections this way because these are older connections. You'll easily make a couple of these connections, one connection at least start leaking and you don't want that. So make sure you have two pipe wrenches. Gas valves back on and gas is on so we are ready to go old gas valve bad let's go unit is back on it's going to energize this valve and we should see some pressure i'm going to zero this out Boop. all right you should hear this click Sometimes you can feel it open up. You just put your hand on the gas valve. All right. Whoa, way too high. Come on down, buddy, come on down. But new gas valve is working. We definitely need to lower that pressure to three and a half. So, we're going to take the cap off of the high before it goes down in the low stage. See? And if you don't know how to adjust pressure, I'll drop a link in the description to another video. All right, see that? All right, that's much better. We're going to leave that about 3.5. 
I'll drop that video down in the link in the description so you know how to adjust pressure though. Now, let's get the sensor replaced, test it with our meter. Now, our unit's powered back up and it says condenser coil temp one sensor failure. All right, so let's find that. Let's measure the resistance and see if the sensor is failed, like it says. And if it's the condenser, that means it's probably a sensor inside here. You see that? There's a couple sensors. And then here's a sensor. So let's find out which one it is. And let's see if it's bad. So. All right, so we're going to want to consult the schematic. And what I suggest you do is go to the legend and see if you can find any sensors. I see one already. Looks like EC1 slash 2 evaporator coil temperature sensor. See if we can find any more. Return air humidity sensor, return air temp temperature sensor. So outdoor air temperature sensor, outdoor air humidity sensor, that's optional. So let's start with the EC1 and two. Now let's find out where that's at, where it comes from, from this board. You see where it says UCB? Well, UCB means unit control board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to EC1. Right here we have two sensors. We have a white and a black wire that go to each one. And we've got a plug, which is P2. Let's find that. Okay, so we've got this, which is our, oh, we got this too. Supplier temperature, return air temperature, outdoor air, air temperature. And then we've got EC1 and EC2. So we're gonna start with this. We're gonna take our meter and we're gonna measure ohms. All right, take your meter, turn it to ohms. Field piece SC440. Make sure it reads open loop, and let's begin. All right, we're going to start with EC number one. It's reading 0.627. All right, let's go to EC number two. It's reading 10. Okay. So now we know we have a bad sensor, and it's this sensor right here. Okay, they don't both come together. You can order just one sensor, and the way you know that is you come over here and you can see there are two spades right there and that connects that wiring harness to those sensors. So all I gotta do is take the sensors loose right there where the spades are, take those spade connectors loose and then measure each sensor. It's what I'm gonna do right now to figure out which one is which. Either that or you could just come up here and you could look at the number on the wire. You got 235 and 236 for this one. It looks like we got 230. Come on, where are you at, buddy? Where are you? Where are you at? 231 and 232. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I measured the one on the left and I measured the one on the right and the one on the right is bad. That's why I got the wires disconnected. Now I'm gonna take that sensor out. Okay, so here's the sensor that I pulled out, 0.6. This is the sensor that we diagnosed as a bad sensor. Now, I've got a new sensor right here, which I'm gonna measure the resistance, make sure it's good before I install it. Looks a little bit different too, a little unusual that it looks different. Hopefully they sent me the right one, but as long as it's a 10 kilo ohm sensor, then I should be good. This right here is how you mount that sensor on that pipe. All right, here's the resistance reading of that sensor and it's 10, so. We got a good sensor, all right, let me install it. Got the sensor installed in place on the suction line leading from the compressor to the evaporator coil. So excited. Need to get some wire ties and insulate it. Insulated, wire tied back into place. Now I'm gonna tighten all this unit back up, make sure we don't have that error anymore. And then, tighten this fan belt. I'm going to show you how to do that and then talk about some common problems that I have with these units. All right, so to tighten this fan belt, and all of these are different, but this one, you're going to loosen these two screws and then two more screws on the back, and that is going to be able to make this motor move back and forth because, of course, this motor is mounted on a slidable mount. So what you need is you need a half-inch socket, and I use a bit that I connect to my drill, but you can also use a ratchet. So, but we're gonna use this, it's half inch, and I commonly use half inch or 9 16 sockets on these uh, blower motors and mounts. 
So before we tighten it, just so you can see, it is super loose. We're gonna get the drill. All right. Oh, you see that? See how the motor just slid back? And then that's a lot tighter, but look, see, we can move that motor now. But I need to go ahead and loosen the screw in the back because I know there's a screw in the back. All right, so there was only one screw in the back and we've already been able to push the motor back and you can see that's a lot tighter, but I need to tighten these bolts. So that's what I'm gonna do. There's one, there's two, that's half inch half inch bolts by the way and now look at that that is beautiful now i need to tighten that that bolt in the back okay so we've changed the gas valve we changed the sensor and now i'm going to talk about maintenance what type of maintenance and also what type of common problems i have with these rooftop gas package units so first on the list for maintenance is these filters this right here is filter access to this unit you can see a wide view here this is where the return for this package rooftop unit is the air is pulled in from the building through these filters and then through this coil see the coil this is the indoor coil uh, fan belts fan belts get loose and depending on how large the system is there may be bearings that have to be lubricated these bearings they don't have a zert so there's no way to lubricate these bearings you can see they're sealed uh, you've got an adjustable sheave so if you want to adjust the fan speed of the uh, blower you would adjust it here most of these units have vfds now variable frequency drives this is the non-adjustable pulley right here uh, so adjusting the fan belts is very important here's where the heat exchanger is and you know if a unit's 10 years old or more you may need to loosen these screws and take this panel off and actually look at the heat exchanger another panel you can take off to look at the heat exchanger is right there and if you ever wanted to check supply air temperature uh, this panel right here here drilling a hole through that and having a way to check supply air temperature that's a perfect place to check this is a good place to check return air so that's the return supply panel this right here is for the blower section bad contactors you find contactors bad you find relays bad capacitors sometimes will fail um, outdoor fan motors indoor fan motors you can tell because there's oil or there's a sound there's a noise uh, compressors will fail uh, coils will fail micro channel coils uh, very easy to get a hole in these coils you can repair them i've got videos on repairing micro channel coils bad gas valves bad inducer motors uh, burners uh, not being cleaned regularly uh, can cause the flame not to spread across same thing with the flame sensor um, you, need, need main, you need maintenance for flame sensor igniter let's see bad sensors you've seen that we've got bad sensors bad boards you can have bad simplicity controls where they say a sensor is bad but it's actually the board after you check the sensors let's see what else uh, fan blades fan blades can get torn up uh, da, 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 da. disconnects bad disconnects and also uh, fuses blown uh, these disconnects commonly have fuses in them and whenever they do those fuses can go bad see that if you don't know how to check fuses check out my playlist hvac tips for technicians uh, and that is a very quick overview of what problems you can have Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments below what you learned. If you did learn something, if you have a question, put it down there. Questions can lead to content. So thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing before you go. Really appreciate everybody watching, and I hope you learned something in this video. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. And I'll keep you cool if you let me.